decision to open your heart so that your son could come forth. And um, Holy Spirit, thank you for being that ever-present, overshadowing environment for the sun to form in the womb of our spirit. Thank you for encompassing us with the mercies of God to bring forth Jesus in real ways. Thank you, Lord, for hearts that are serious and broken and open and desirous of, of the true son of your love, the firstborn, really being formed within us and coming forth out of us. Lord, we just ask that you would guide our hearts, um, our spirits, um, that you would overshadow us during this time and deposit in us what will bring forth Christ out of us. We look to you and you alone, Lord. <laughs> We're here together. I am not here as a teacher, but as a seeker, as one who wants to bring forth Christ. We're here, all of us, together in the spirit. So just honor that, Lord, as we seek you in that heart. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, I was just mentioning to, to some folks that today is our last class for this semester. We've made it about halfway through of Micah. We're about at the halfway point. So we're going to continue, most likely, next semester and finish. Um, but for this last class, um, my Bible fell open, <laughs> and I don't really uh, condone that way of seeking the Lord. but nonetheless that that happened to the verses that we are going to look at today i i know in my heart that it was the lord for us to have our final class um with job instead of micah um but it's very much our heart in micah um that job is going to be bringing another angle on and i believe it's perfect for our our class before break it's a it's a great place to um, kind of continue to digest and ruminate on uh, the things the Spirit's been depositing in our hearts to bring forth Christ. And, um, and the things that are addressed in, in these verses of Job, it's like a summation of the heart in which we have been seeking the Lord and also um, a place to let the Spirit, I don't know, maybe go a little deeper and in our break week, it's nothing to do with the times and seasons of the earth, but for those of you who aren't even watching this live, in this journey of bringing forth the sun, I think these are really, really needful. Um, so I just pray that as we, as we listen to these verses, our hearts could hear them, not as teaching, and I know that's our heart, but boy, it's so hard to break out of that sometimes, that we would listen from a low place and not a high place. You know, if you have an issue or something with me, why don't you just take that to the cross right now? Because I am just the donkey. It's not about the vessel. It's about what God has in his word. If you have an issue with yourself, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about anyone in this room or in your family or at your job. It's about the Father's heart for his son. And maybe we need to just take a moment and let the Lord know we're not going to get all caught up in this room in our pride, in comparing ourselves among ourselves, in things that have nothing to do with the Father's heart for his son. And just become an environment that the dove will want to land on. Let's just, just do that. That's in all of us so deeply. Lord, we thank you. We want to hear with the ears of that heart that is in each one of us, that heart that just wants the son doesn't want to be somebody, but wants to bring forth Jesus to our own loss and shame. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's turn to um, Job chapter 39. And I do believe, you know, it's just the way I, I like to search the scriptures together. I like to look at the word. I like the word of God to be the authority, um, not my comments or my views or anything. I just believe the word and the spirit is what we're here for, and so let's just look at the scriptures. Um, now, as we're turning to Job chapter 39, uh, I'm going to read just a, a verse out of Ecclesiastes that we all pretty much know by heart. It's Ecclesiastes, and I think it's chapter 11. I don't have the chapter down, but it's verse 3, maybe 2 and 3. To every, no, 
I don't know what, it's out of Ecclesiastes, I don't have the verse written, but it's to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. So um, just this verse, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to be born. So there's a, there's a season and a timing of bringing forth Christ in us. You know, there's, there is that in the spirit. And, um, and it's important for us to be in tune with the seasons of the seed in us. Um, you know, there's a season where, just in the natural, where you're just maybe one month pregnant. You know, if someone's asking you to manifest the sun at that point, that is an abusive thing to do. You know, um, there's a time when, when the seed's not even there and, and you're having to break up fallow ground. Well, you know, something in our hearts, in our spirits, should be able to be in tune with God and with with what he's doing in us individually, to know what, what season we are at. And, and, and in that, be with the father, the husbandman, where, where he's having us in regards to his son in us. And, um, and not let pride try to make us a mother of the multitudes. If we're not that yet, it's okay to not be that yet. It's okay to be where God has us, isn't it? And it's pride that's gonna make us be where we're not. We don't want that. We just want to be real with God, right? We don't want to get back to chapter one where he's having to tread down our high places because our belly's rising with leaven. We want it to rise with the sun. And it's okay if he's treading down because that's part of getting us ready for the sun. That's an old, you know, discerning the seasons isn't just understanding what happens in winter. It, it snows and in summer there's sun. It's understanding the heart behind the season. And it's all because the seed is, you know, the father's wanting to bring forth his son. So we can be with him when he's breaking us up. It's hard to be with the father when he's breaking up fallow ground. I, I know I used to, be a, if you, the devil used to just come and eat my lunch. The Lord would deal with me and then he'd have to stop because the devil would deal, take, deal with me. And then that's it, whatever, right? No fun. But if I knew the father's heart was to get his son in me so I could bring him forth eventually, I would be with the father in that. And I would rejoice even in chastisement. I would call it a pleasant balm, like David did, right? Because I discerned the season of the Father's heart for his son and me. That's important. Um, if, if we don't do that, then, then we're just going to get caught up in depressed mud, right? Or inflated ego, air, or dirt, or all these elements that have nothing to do with the firstborn son within us. Amen? Just earth in all of its weirdness, right? And, and you know what happens when we, when we get off in that way? We feel out of whack. Have you ever felt out of whack? You know, you can feel out of whack when the Lord's trying to break up fallow ground and you're just like, I'm supposed to be bringing forth the sun and I'm a failure. I hate myself and I'm so, oh, devil, come here. Let's just be friends. You know, that is counterproductive. The father's not expecting his son when the son is not even seated in there yet. He's expecting broken ground and a heart to get off the shore of you and into the boat with the sower and let the spirit make two one and bring forth the sun in that form of sowing. Amen? Then the seed does its job and the spirit does its job and God gives increase. We can be with him in that and we, we can discern the seasons of the sun in us and, and learn to have a healthy pregnancy. <laughs> we say healthy pregnancy. Who's going to come up to a woman that's three months pregnant and just start whipping her because she doesn't have more manifestation? Would you do that to anybody? Would you do that to you? Right? Right? But if the cross and Christ crucified is what makes that baby grow, then would you call condemnation that which is food straight from God's heart? We got to discern. We gotta do, see what I mean? We have to know the Lord. And um, so it, it's impossibly tricky. With our pride, our lack of discernment, our compassionate ministry angles, and all the things that are in us, it's almost impossible unless you get so linked up with the living God that you won't be deceived because you know his voice, right? You know him. 
So you just, and that's where teaching can be dangerous because we just get the teaching about the sun in us. And we don't have any discernment where we're at in, in our pregnancy. It's just a teaching. So we hear about manifestation and we want to be the manifester, a mother of multitudes. We hear about brokenness and, oh, maybe I'm broken or maybe, I, well, maybe all that's true in different parts. But our place is to stay in life, in living union, in a, a flow with our dad and our, the Holy Spirit, the, the father of the seed of Christ within us. Do you see what I mean? There's a heart that needs to happen. Uh, uh, David had a heart, right? He had a heart, and he, he was able to discern at times the seasons of what God was doing. To be, be with the father there. You know, break, break with him. And, and let the sun increase and us decrease with him. And oh my gosh, it's a beautiful thing if it's a person we're involved with and not just a task. And so there's a seasons and uh, there's a timing involved. With everything, there's a season and the timing. And that timing is part of uh, what God's doing. There's timing with all of this. And that's where Job starts off in, in chapter 39. In verse 1, it says, Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth? Or can you mark when the hinds do calve? Verse 2, can you number the months that they fulfill? Or know you the time when they bring forth? Beautiful, beautiful. Let's just read that again. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth? Or can you mark when the hinds do calve? Can you number the months that they fulfill? Or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? Um, we already talked about some of the questions. Do we, do, we, do we know the seasons of the life of Christ as he's forming in us? I don't have, I have some thoughts here, but it, I don't think they're, the core of what the Spirit's trying to say. I think we each need to go to Him. And, and you know, as we travail for Christ to be formed in us and in others, you know, there's an attunement to the Son being what's being formed. It wasn't that what happened in Galatians? There was something forming in the people, but it wasn't the Son. It was the circumcision of the flesh, and it was them trying to do it by the law. And if you really look close at that, they were bringing forth the Son of bondage. They were bringing forth their own increase in the name of, of this new gospel, this, right? And, and Paul's saying, that's not the Son. You're, you're, you're travailing, and you're circumcising, and you're doing the law with all your heart, but you're not bringing forth Christ. Where's the firstborn Son? And he bowed down and started travailing in birth that Christ would be formed, the firstborn, would, the son would be formed in them. And so, so questions would say, do we know the difference between us doing it in our flesh by the law or the firstborn son fulfilling it by his nature that is none other than him only? Can we discern what is us at our best and our brightest and our most lamb-like attitude and the coming forth of the lamb of God? who is the only acceptable sacrifice. Can we discern that? And, and if not, then we, we ask Holy Spirit, soak us in the true image, soak us in the true spirit. You know what? Find that which is the real son in me and, and, and overshadow him, draw him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's focus on him. Let him receive the ministry. Let him be the one that, that God's speaking into. You know, we, we can sit anywhere, like in a class or in the Word, but where, where is what we're hearing? Who is it, who's it going to? If we get condemned, why, why are we getting condemned? Because it's going to us. It's not going to the seed. The seed would never be condemned. It would just be one with the Father and take everything into death and sacrifice. I mean, the seed is pure. We only get condemned because it's going to the wrong son. Do you, you see what I mean? It's going to the vessel. It's going to us. Pride, why do we get proud? Competitive, all the different things. Of the, it's going to the wrong part of us, the part that's supposed to be crucified and is. But as mamas, as vessels, as earth that was made to be filled and inhabited by God's only son, it's our responsibility to take all that God gives us and put it down into the seed. 
It's our, our responsibility to let that not go to our head, we get puffy, not let that go to our heart that wants to do it for him and get legalistic and under the law, but let it go straight to the seed of God, which seed is Christ in us, the hope of glory, and let that be the thing that's nourished and cultivated within us. We need to discern that. You know, we, we would be able to handle correction a whole lot better. We would be able to be with the Father every season in which he's cultivating his son and revealing and forming. Amen? It's a beautiful, beautiful thing when we're with them. Even the hardest, awfulest parts of it are a dance, are a song. They really are. Even when you're crying, you're singing too. <laughs> But you know, in Revelation, it says only they that follow the Lamb whithersoever they go can learn that song. You know, it says that in chapter 14, I think verse 4. The, only the ones who are with the Lamb in that way can even learn that song. Because you don't learn that song until you get down in the, the muddy glum of travail and of being with him, putting it all towards him instead of you. Then you, then you start, you learn the song. You know, it's... It's better, it's better than life. It's better than life. It's better than our life getting puffed up and special. To be one with him in his life to our decrees is like heaven. It's the heavens of the heavens. You know, and um, so let's just bring it all to the seed. Let's let, let, let it all flow to Christ in us and not us. Can thou number the months? Can thou discern? And then verse 3. So this next section in Job, uh, I felt like the Spirit said, is called bringing forth the right son. And it's just a picture of like a good mama, a good heart, a good field, a good vessel, a good earthen vessel for the Son of God. And, and this is, they're going to bring forth, we've been talking about bringing forth all semester. Here's just a different angle from the, the scriptures on it. So verse 3 says, they bow themselves. They bring forth their young ones. They cast out their sorrows. So obviously now we're at the time of bringing forth, and it's not always the time of bringing forth. And when it's not the time of bringing forth, we shouldn't be under the condemnation. We should be where we're at. But when that time comes, here's these verses. And let's just look at the first part. They bow themselves. The bowing these ones do is with one singular purpose, and that is to travail in birth to bring forth the son. I, you know how many times I approach the Lord and I, I bow and I'm like, why, why am I bowing? You know what? I'm praying or I'm repenting or I'm just crying out, you know. But ever since I've been in Micah, I felt like the Spirit gave me this imagery of, uh, of bowing in a different way. And it was the bowing down of childbirth that... I am not bowing down to cry over my spilt milk and my awful flesh and my horrible failures and the problems in this earth. And, and I'm not bowing down to be humble and spiritual and all that jazz. I am bowing down to bring forth your son. I mean, I am travailing that he come out and that what comes out of me is like the sweet incense that rises. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this release of him. And... Uh, the bowing, they, they bow themselves, but they bring forth the young. When they bow, Jesus comes forth. Um, they're not trying to earn something from a humble approach. And have you ever, okay, I know we're, we're tired, and we, let's shake ourselves awake here. How many need to wake it up? You, are we okay? We need to stand up? We need to get with the Lord? I know Mallory's good. Okay. All right, so, so people approach you know, so say the altar, and, and they get down, and they get down, they're repenting, and they're getting it out, and they're crying it out, and they're, God, they're doing it, right? They get up, and they feel better, and I'm talking about myself pretty much, you know, I, I'm the queen of this. <laughs> yeah, Mary knows, you know, and then I'm up, and I'm better because I bowed, I wept, I travailed. Of course, I never brought forth the sun, but I had a great display in the flesh. I'm not saying it was always in the flesh. There, it's a time where you really are doing business with God, and it's part of it. And I really honestly don't negate that at all. I'm actually all for that. I, I, I'm a big advocate of it in my own life. But, but I am saying there is a place where I am satisfied with that, and it does become like a vain show in the flesh. 
you know, at times, not always, definitely. No one can judge that but God, so we should never judge each other. But, but I'm talking judging ourselves, that I'll get up from there and then I'll be like, okay, man, I feel softer. Man, I feel like I've released some things. I've had some spiritual hallelujahs and some cry out, oh, Jesus, and woe is me, and I'm wretched and all. But the Lord's like, but where's my son? But these ones, when they bow themselves, they bring forth. Right? That's the difference. Their bowing isn't like circumcising themselves in the flesh. It's the cross. There's a death and another life comes forth. The sun comes out of bowing. And so I'm like, Lord, redefine bowing to me. Redefine. You know, I, I don't want to travail and then never have the baby come out. What, what's the use of travailing for, I think my mom was in labor for 24 hours. What's the use of going through like days of labor, or years of labor for decades of labor for me, you know what I'm saying? and all the pain and misery, and never bring forth the son, but be so proud of the travail. The Lord's like, the travail means nothing. It's the son that means everything. But these ones who are the good mamas, they bow themselves and bring forth their young ones. That's huge. I mean, I just think there's something really from the heart of God there for me. I mean, it means a lot to me personally. <laughs> They're not trying to earn status with their humble approach. Um, they are low. They're very low, but they're unaware of their own condition because like when they're low, their lowness really is to get the sun out. It's not to look low. Yeah, I mean, isn't it sad that I even have, that I even understand this because, because of my own wretchedness, right? But, but you know, you can say I, I was bowed down, I was low, you know? And, uh, but did the Lord raise his son up from that? Was it, were, were you, was that, more than just bowing, but bringing forth. I appeared very lamb-like. I bowed myself down. I was made very low. I had an appearance of, of lamb-like humility. Yeah, great. But between you and God, did the sun come out of that? Or did you get literally puffed up greater because you were so humble in, in the eyes of other people, in the eyes of your own self. And maybe it was all alone in your bedroom. But did something go back to you instead of to the seed? I mean, we do have to ask us th these questions because we can really, we can get stuck in the wilderness for 40 years chasing our own tail because it becomes more about us. And how does it become about us? Because we get caught up in these things like bowing and looking like the lamb and travail and and none of it means squat if you don't bring forth the sun. Nothing. Not a zip. I never knew you. But I sought you. I had lamb-like features. I fooled everyone. I made grand displays in the flesh, and everyone thought I was an amazing Christian. I don't know you. Where's my son? Well, I got right to the point, and then I was going to have to die. There was going to be shame involved. People were going to think so much of me when he came forth, because he's a slaughtered lamb. So I didn't want to lose that image. I didn't want to decrease. So I didn't really go for the increase. I just went for the outward things. They bow themselves down, and they bring forth their young. Amen? I mean, we want Jesus, don't we? The real Jesus. And you know, it's, it's merciful to have someone share these things with you when you're younger. Don't you agree, Mallory, for us? To, to hear these when you're younger than to get caught up in the trappings of this message and take it to yourself in secret ways. And God has to deal. I mean, there's no timetable. The cross is, if you, if you harbor these things, he'll, it's not like, okay, you, you did your time. He will have to dig them out 20 years from now, 10 years from now, five days from now. No one's exempt. He wants his son. Nobody's special or better or more loving or... He just wants his son. That's why we're here. So wouldn't it be merciful if someone said this to you now? So you could just say, Lord, deal with me. I don't want to, I don't want to get caught in that. I want your son. And, and, and wouldn't it be great if I said, hey, hate me, but get the son. Get mad at me. Sl you know, just for right now, be very mad at me. Get angry with me. That's okay. I was angry with people, people who were fighting for me, for Christ in me. And, and, you know, it was good for them to just take a couple hits so I could get the Lord. I'm okay with that because it's not about me. 
I want all of us, me included, I have to talk to myself this way. Let's get him. You know, let's do it. Let's do, let's do it for real. Let's not let anything steal that seed out of us in this way, in this way. They cast forth their sorrows. They cast out their sorrows. So they bring forth the sun, and when that, when that sun, that true sun comes forth, they are able to just cast out all that junk that brought them to the point of bringing forth Jesus. All the failure and all that pride and all that, all that wretchedness. Do you know what I mean? They let the real deal happen, so there had to be some real contrast at work. The cross, when the cross comes, it devastates everything and brings forth Jesus. So, you know, if the real deal happened, there was sorrow involved. The sorrow of, oh my God, what have I done to the, uh, I, looking upon him whom we have pierced. Zechariah 12 and Amos 8 says that they will look upon him whom they have pierced and all the families of Judah will mourn like a great day of mourning has never been. For they will look upon that firstborn son whom they have pierced. That's sorrow. Look how I treated him, right? But when he comes forth, the one that I've been piercing and usurping and stealing his stuff and taking his inheritance, you know, all that I do, me, when, I, when he finally comes forth, whew, I'm casting that out. Because you know why? Because now he's on the throne. I'm not being bashy. I'm not taking his place. Do you know what I'm saying? It's Jesus now. And I can cast that stuff out because... He has come. He has come forth. He has appeared. Oh, hallelujah. They bring forth their young. We just talked about that, so we don't have to keep going there. Um, they full. Let's see, what does it say here? The season brought these. Yeah, they have not fulfilled. We need to fulfill our months. That's right. Right. So they bring forth their youngs. You know, they bow themselves and they fulfill their months. They're willing to stay low, bow down long enough to fulfill their months of pregnancy or childbirth. They're willing to endure the season of being bowed down so the babe, so the lamb can truly form. They they're will fulfill their months. And there's people who just, Jesus said it as a sower, there's people who just want fruit right now. And they want it manifest right away. And he said, beware of fast growth. Beware. And you know what? Beware of it in yourself because it will make you feel like you're something that you really aren't yet, oftentimes, and it, it's not your friend. Beware of fast growth. Be okay with the process. Be okay that pregnancy in the natural takes nine months. Be okay that there are the seasons and timing so he can form through all the fire and travail and dealings of the cross. Be with him, and these ones stay bowed long enough to let all the seasons come so that when he finally comes, my Lord, it is no longer I, but Christ. I really am crucified. And the life that I live, it is not me. Right now, it is the Son living. It's beware of fast growth. Don't seek fast growth. Seek Jesus. Don't seek to be somebody. Seek the Son in the season that the Spirit's bringing him forth in you. Do you see what, do you, you kind of hear the admonition of the Lord in this? Seek to be bowed down until you fulfilled that season of childbirth, of, of forming. And, and how wonderful to be bowed down because you're, 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 you're like this to bring forth the sun in you. You're, it's precious. You're, you're staying low. You're not rising. You're staying broken, but not for brokenness sake or humility's sake, but for the sun to grow, for the spirit to bring forth Jesus and not you. How wonderful to be with the Lord in that way. And you can lay your, bed, your head on your bed at night and be in peace knowing he may not have come forth yet, but I am with you. I am not trying to be something that he is not yet in me. I am not trying to rise up in my own strength and, and, and usurp him because I can. I can fake it. But you're saying, Lord, I'm with you. I'm with you in the season you have me in, and I will stay bowed down, and I will travail, and I will bring him forth in the time of life that you've ordained. But I'm with you, and I'm looking you right in the eyes, and you know we are together. And you know what? That's just as beautiful as the day he comes forth, because you're with God. The word was with God. We always want to be with God because we're the big fruitful tree that's better than all the other trees that don't have fruit. Where is the lamb's mind in that? And where is true oneness in that? 
How about being one with him when we're the barren tree? But we're his barren tree, and in our, in our barrenness, he's going to be the, the one. Who, and how about when it's just all inside, no one sees anything, but we really are grafting, and we really are cleaving with purpose of heart. We really are joining in with, you know what I'm saying? How beautiful is that to the eyes of God? You know, maybe just as beautiful as when the fruit comes, because we were with him. We rejected these enemies, these enemies, you know. So I just, I just think there's something there for our hearts, for my heart. Um, and it, it's important. Um, the next verse says they grow up with corn. Oh, it's verse 4. But you know, here, here again you see that, that this baby, and here's where the Lord kind of started showing how this mama's taking care of what's in her womb. Like she's feeding it with corn. She's feeding it with John 12, 24 food. She's saying, you know, I'm going to feed you with the corn of wheat must fall on the ground and die before it brings forth fruit. My fruit isn't going to come from any other method than the cross of Jesus Christ, than the applied cross to me. I'm going to feed my inner man in the life of Christ therein with the cross. I'm not going to feed him with things that make me feel encouraged, but leave him unformed. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to feed him with the cross. Now, a lot of people want the mama that's going to feed. I like to have the sugar cereal in the morning, right? And I want somebody who gives me that. I like fruit roll-ups with extra sugar and the cherry and grape flavors, even though it's fruit, but it's a fruit roll-up. And, you know, I like this kind of food. I don't want to be around that food that makes me feel condemned because I take it all to the vessel instead of the treasure. You know, but the wise mamas. This is Job after like 38 chapters of putting himself out there before God. I'm telling you, when the Lord said this to Job, let me tell you, every word was marked. This man, he was, this was like the, the silence of God Almighty was upon that man to hear every word the Lord spoke. He was speaking out of a whirlwind. And what did he speak of? The process of bringing forth the son. Tell me that's not important to the Father. And if it's important to the Father, it's important to me and my story. And these are the things he's touching on to Job, a guy who is severely out of tune, but yet the top dude in the whole world. If he needed this, I need this. I don't think we're all the top dude in the whole world. So maybe we can just be humble and listen and let the Spirit talk to us. Amen. I, I know I need it. I'm not saying anyone here doesn't, but there could be someone 10 years from now listening to this where the Lord's saying that to them, you know? And we just want the Spirit to have his way. So they grow up with corn. They feed on the dying seed principle, and that nature of the Lamb eats it up in us, eats it up. Have you ever felt your soul say, I hate what they're saying, but your spirit go, I love this. This is who I am. Keep it coming, but I'm going to kill them. <laughs> you know, your soul and your spirit are not always in sync during the birthing process. You know, there are times when my soul is out in the, it's out in, like, I don't know, where Pluto, freezing to death in selfishness, and my spirit is, like, basking in the center of the heart of the Father with the Son. And I'm like, wow, you two couldn't be on two different planes. I choose to identify with my spirit. You know, my Bible says, Deny your soul, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. It doesn't say fix it, go to Pluto and bring it back home. No, just whatever. You're a mess. You're selfish. You're the big baby that wants all the attention. You're the big thing that wants to be the best of everyone, get all the glory. Well, you know what? You're crucified. You're already dealt with by the cross, and I am going to deny you and feed my spirit the lamb, whether you just want to scream all day, you know what I mean? Go ahead, throw fit. Just throw it back there because I'm following Jesus. You're behind me, and the Lord, the cross is in front of me. And you have to do that. That's all part of the birthing process. I mean, my gosh. I mean, you've got to deal with your soul. These verses are going to get into the soul. It's going to be the birth of a wild donkey. Thank you very much. We're going there in a minute. It's a part of what God said to Job. But right now, he's talking about the good mamas. And they're going to feed that baby in the womb of their spirit or the inner man. I'm not sure. You know, I don't want to get it caught up in, in logistics and linguistics of that. I don't know probably the proper words, and please forgive me. But within us is the sun, and wherever that is located in us, he is located in us. That's what we want to feed, right? 
We feed them with corn, and then it says they go forth. They go forth. The firstborn son, the father said, let him come unto me and sacrifice. They feed that Jesus in their womb with corn, with, with the spirit of the cross, with the crucified. Do you see what I'm saying? With that mind, with that which is him. And he grows and he goes forth unto the Father in sacrifice. That baby gets so formed in us, Jesus, the Son. We're talking about Christ being formed in us. Baby is a very, probably not great word to use, but we're using the, the imagery of childbirth. But the Son gets so, Christ gets formed in us, like Galatians 4.19 speaks of, to the degree that he begins to go forth to the Father in sacrifice. We fed him enough where now he's strong and ready to give his life through us. What does it say? Their young ones are in good liking. They grow up with corn. They grow up. They're formed with corn. And then they go forth to the father in sacrifice. That's the firstborn son. That's Christ in us. And they return not unto them. Oh, that's a big one. They return not because once you let Jesus go. He's not supposed to come back and say, and I came from this lovely vessel here. It was him or her. And let's just glorify them. Because they don't come back. He goes to the Father. That's like Hannah giving Samuel and saying, you know what? He's yours. He's yours to serve the altar. Picture of the firstborn going in. She didn't say, eh, I want him back. When he gets big enough to plow my fields paint my house. You know, I can teach him a little cooking. Send him my way. No, that's our soul wanting to glean off of Christ. <clears throat> it just says, they don't, they don't come back to him. They give them. A good mama gives the babe. Right? Releases the son. Just says, just go to the father and sacrifice. Give your life through others through me and don't come back to me. I mean, it's like the, the saints in Hebrews 11. Where it says they, the world wasn't even worthy of these dudes and we don't even know their names. Because you're like, don't let the son come back to me. I, I don't even want you to know my name. Just know that the son came out to the father in sacrifice. You, that's a good mama. Don't, you know, Jesus didn't want anyone to know when he did anything. He was like, don't, I adhere you to not tell anybody that I did this miracle. Don't let it come back to me. I don't want it to come back. I just want it to go to others. Just release, release, give selflessly. That's Jesus. That's how the son, I mean, that was the son, Jesus of Nazareth, the same spirit, that same son is in us. And he still doesn't want anyone to know. He just wants to give, right? Yeah, that's a good mama, bringing forth the son. They go forth, return not unto them. Okay, and the next verse is five. Now, this is, the next section we're at here is called bringing forth the wrong son. This is a fun little journey. So, Job chapter 39 verse 5, who hath sent out the wild donkey free, or who has loosed the bands of the wild donkey, whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land are his dwelling. So rather than releasing the son to the father, do we set our soul free and loose it from the bonds of the cross? Do we let, so here's the deal. We've got Christ forming in our inner man, in, in deep within us. But we've got that soul, that wild donkey, that self-life. Do you know what I'm saying? And it is ready to roll. It's like, I am ready. I'm ready to go for the gold. I'm ready to come out and do the job that the firstborn son's supposed to do, but he is slow cooking. You know, I'm ready for some action. I'm ready for some glory. I'm ready for some movement and shaking in this world. For God, let me go. Let, set me free. And the bad mama does it. You do realize every day we are the bad or the good mama. Every day. This is so not a teaching. <laughs> for me, at least, I know it's for all of us, but I've totally taken it in my heart. That. So, so, okay, I can set the wild donkey free. I can loose my soul, my self-life from the bonds of crucified with Christ and I can just let it roll. Uh, yes. So, and it, you know, of course, the soulish son is only meant for captivity, whose house I have made the wilderness. He's not going to the father. He's going into captivity. He doesn't realize that he thinks he's going into a great, many glorious things. <laughs> but really, he's going into the wilderness. So, verse 11, 
we're skipping down, it says, will you trust this wild donkey son? Will you trust him? Will you trust him because his strength is great? Will you leave your labor to him? So the question is, just because I am or someone else is strong and talented, wise and anointed, will I trust them knowing that it is the flesh and not the sun formed within? Will I let that carry the ministry of the Lord in the spirit of a wild donkey set loose into the things of God? Will I trust that? Will I live by that instead of the firstborn? Do in the smallest daily thing, am I okay to let that wild donkey go free and just start doing stuff because it needs to be done? And he can do it well because he's strong and he's smart and he's talented. Or am I like, I am not going to bring forth the wrong son in this. I am, you are crucified with Christ and you are bound to the cross in, in oneness with his death. Bind that sacrifice to the altar. And I am not, and it says it, the father is asking Job, will you, this is Job who said he was as righteous as God, you know what I mean? He was arguing, arguing with God for 30 chapters or more because he knew more than God. So God says to him, you're going to trust this wild donkey, Job? Because his strength is great? Are you going to leave everything in his care? You're good with that, huh? You're good with this guy taking over everything precious to you. You're going to trust him. That's okay with you. Will you believe him when he tells you that he's going to bring the seed home and gather it into the barn? So you're going to believe that he is able to inherit and possess the land even though he's the wrong seed. You're going to have faith in this one. You're going you're gonna to trust that this is the one who's going to bring in the harvest for the father. He's going to gather all of this into the father. The seed's going to be all gathered into the father's barn, his heart. You're going to trust that with this son. And this son may try to convince us that he has giftings and he has appeals and he has angles and he has wisdom and he has all this great stuff to offer. And we have no discernment that it's not Christ in us. It's just us for Christ. And God says to Job, and Job didn't have this discernment. So you're going to trust all that is sacred and all that is of my son and only my son can do. You're going to trust all these things that I've given you to that son. You're okay with that. You believe in him. You know, I have been told time and again, you can't trust anybody, including yourself, unless Christ be formed in them. I don't trust anyone, but somebody who has Christ. I don't care how sweet they are, how much they claimed, oh, I just, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm sure, sure you are, until it gets just hard enough or I offend you just enough, you're going to put that knife in my back, and I expect you to do so. You can't help it. That's the nature of that old man. We all do it. We're all going to do it. I don't trust anybody. I don't trust me. I certainly don't trust me because I know me the best of everyone. And I know for a fact I can't trust me. I don't trust anything that isn't Christ formed. And when he's formed, I trust Jesus. And that's it. And I'm sure I'm not perfect in that, but that is true in my heart. That is a seed that is true in my heart. And, um, but we have to ask ourselves this as mothers. So we're, we're willing to release things that aren't the son. We're willing to trust things that are really for the father with that, which is not Christ formed in us. And this is what God's asking Job. You know, and there's times when we just have to get out of Job and into God. We just have to stand up there with him and look at it from his view and just say, listen, we're so, I, all of us, everyone who's ever been dealt with, we're so aware of our side. We're so aware of our fears and our issues and our hurts and our injustices and all these things that that wild donkey son, that soulish and earthbound knows to the uttermost degree that we, we can't even really hear the father because the offense gets so high that he can't father our spirit anymore. He can't father his firstborn in us. Because this other son is just so huge. He's just like, what about me? What about all that I have to offer? What about all that I can bring forth? What about all that I can fulfill? I'm strong, I'm good, I'm talented. I'm even better than the firstborn in a lot of ways. Well, that's the problem. You are better than the firstborn. There's no sacrifice. There's no weakness. There's no, you have the wrong spirit. You know, and he's talking to me. I mean, isn't this true? Oh, wretched man that I am. We really, but here's Job. And he's like, you know what? If you're going to go through all that travail and dealing in the cross, man, let it take away that wrong son. Don't let it set him free and don't justify 
and don't get puffed up. Let the spirit nurture Christ in you. Stay bowed down. Be with God and what he's doing. Let it be real. You know, it isn't pretty, this process. Why isn't this building just full of people and the parking lot like people down the street like at a football game? My Lord, it should be. For the, just to know Jesus, nothing to do with us, but it should be. There should be more appeal to know the Son of God is your life than a football game. So why are so many chairs empty? Because this process is hard. You have to love Jesus more than you love yourself. You have to be willing to stand against you. You have to be willing to trust God's view of his son above all your great reasonings about why you're right and God's wrong. And that was Job. And you have to be willing to get out of you at some point. God, you are right. I, don't have, I shut my mouth. I have nothing to say. I repent in dust and ashes. Man, I don't know. And God brought forth his son in a vessel like that. But when we know and we want to set forth that wild donkey and we want to do it in the smallest secret ways, you know, God sees that. He loves us. He's patient. He's never changing. But it's not as if it's just okay. You know, that builds into a way that we relate to God and others, and it's hard to bring that down. So when we're young, we want to cultivate a heart that says, man, I don't want to just let this stuff run free, these wild, rebellious children in my mind and way. I don't want to just let them run free. I want to bind them to the altar and let the firstborn son, the true heir, be formed. And I want everything God's saying to me to be listened to with the proper ears. I don't want to you know, I don't want to fight God so much that, okay, just live by your own strength. Just live by your own talent. Just live by your own wisdom. I let you go free. Go. Be. Be all you can be for God. I'm not going to argue anymore. God doesn't strive with flesh forever, you know. There's a time to just break and just say, you're right, I'm wrong. I want to bow down to bring forth Jesus now. I don't want to bow down and offense with God and anger and confusion. I want to just focus every fiber of my being on birthing the sun out of me and let all that I'm going through, right, wrong, or indifferent, be fodder for that seed in me. Let manure help it grow. Let the awful storms, everything that I go through, even the plows that break my back, let it help the seed get bigger in me. All things work together for the good to those who love God and are called to his purpose to be conformed to the image of his essence. And all things work to those who love God like that. You know, and, and Job was one of the tough sons, like all of us, that God had to bring to that place. And then we come to covering. Can you, how we move. Verse 13, gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacock. This, this part here is what the part that hit me the deepest. Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacock, or wings and feathers unto the ostrich? So the peacock is a proud bird. It's not meek and lowly like the dove. What spirit do we fly in? What spirit do we move in? What kind of wings carry us forth? Can we discern the nature of this one that is not lamb, but, but moves with color and fluidity, but in pride and strength? Can we tell what spirit we're moving in and who's coming out of us? Has the Lord cultivated discernment in us of kind and nature of Christ or I? These are the things God wants to do, not teach us stuff. He wants us to discern what's coming out of us. Coming out of us, birthing out of us, coming forth, childbirth, bringing forth a son. What spirit are we of? Does it, Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of, but you're one with me. You're one with me. He said that to his two disciples, but you just don't know who the one is yet. So there's not condemnation in that, but an exhortation to grow into his image. And this is the part here. It's the ostrich, the heart of the ostrich. This is the part that gets me. Verse 13 says, or the feathers of the ostrich. 14, which the ostrich which leaves her eggs in the earth, the ostrich which warms her eggs in the dust and forgets that the foot might crush her eggs or the wild beast might break her eggs. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Her labor is in vain and without fear. So here's a picture of one who has no heart for the seed of the firstborn son of Christ in her. To her, he's just a message. He's just a teaching. He's just a ministry. But he's not a part of her. 
he's not a part of her. He's not that real to her that there is a precious life inside of me. It is the very life of God's son. God's son is in me. To the ostrich, she's just like, the son is far away from me. I'm separate from him. He, he's, he's not in me right now when I go to work and have that attitude. Or you see, he's just somewhere else. She does not embrace the reality of Christ in you as a real thing in her. She probably believes it in her spirit, but she doesn't walk in the awe and the care of that life. She walks as if he is far away in a place that has nothing to do with her as a vessel. She leaves her eggs in the earth where they can be walked on by feet and crushed by wild beasts. So that, that's the sentence there that I think is just full of, of heart and purpose. To her, the way she treats people in the earth, her reactions, her attitudes, they have nothing to do with bringing forth the sun. So she quickly rocks, walks right over his nature in her and just crushes him with her bestial attitudes and ways. Now, this isn't related to Christ in me. This is just me having a hard time right now. This is just me because I had a hard past. This is just me because I have an anger issue. This is justified because I had this problem. You know, the son, I don't know, he's up there in heaven at the right hand of God, and I guess he's in me somewhere. I don't know, I don't think about it. But it's a great doctrine, I believe in that. But right now it's all about me and my, you know, how I walk in the earth. I mean, the egg, you know, I, maybe I'll step right on top of it or crush it with my bestial ways, but I mean, it's, not, it's, it's not as if I'm like walking on top of the son of God and crushing him with the way I treat people, the attitudes that come out of me. He's not that real, come on. Like an ostrich. She has just no care for her seed. She just removes the reality that he's in her far from her and just walks separate. Doesn't realize she's crushing, she's overcoming, she's, right? That's ostrich heart. She forgets that the foot may crush. She forgets about the sun. He's easily forgotten. It's all about me. It's all about the earth. It's all about my herd. It's all about injustice, all about what I think, all about what I'm walking in right now, all about earth issues around me, all about the dirt and the sand and the planet. My soul, my needs, me, me, me. And the sun, I don't know, he's buried somewhere in the earth, far away, like a talent in my pocket that I don't even have to think about. Just, I have no responsibility for this that the Father gave me and trusted me with. I just dig it away somewhere in the earth in my pocket. It doesn't matter, you know. I'm not that close to it. I'm not that responsible for him. He's not that real in my life. I mean, and maybe I step on him. I wouldn't even know because my heart is so hardened. I've forgotten about him. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Verse 16. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. I believe it is very possible to become just hardened to not the truth of, not the doctrine of, not the songs of worship of, not the books about, but the reality of the sun in us, to just get hard and live like the ostrich and walk all over him. And it's a picture of a mother, the way she treats her young. Man, that hit me really deep. That hit me really deep. She forgets and is hardened in such a manner that Christ is not hers in this way of oneness and bringing forth. Her labor is without fear of the Lord, for she takes no thought of how she affects his life in her. Her labor is in vain and without fear. What she goes through has nothing to do with laboring to bring forth Christ. She just labors. There is no fear or awe that God put his son in her. She has forgotten him. She is hardened. That can happen to us when it becomes so much about us and the earth and he becomes so much of just a removed doctrine and that it's like where is the awe where is the love where is the care the nurture the fear of the Lord the travail in childbirth the vowing to bring him forth where is the love you know isn't it funny that Job accused God for 30 chapters plus and God's answer to him is, look how you treat my son. You want to talk offense? You want to talk treating one another right and wrong? Okay, let's talk about how you treat my son and see if you can withstand that argument, buddy. 
you really want to argue, well, let's do it. What do you have to say to that? And, you know, there's times when we have to open up the book of Job and talk to our wild donkey soul and say, this isn't about this person or my soul or how things are going in the earth. This is about, I forgot the Son of God is in me, and I walked right over him like a beast. And I became hardened to the awesome reality that Jesus is inside of me. And my place in this earth is to bring him forth and care for him, nurture him, cover him, let him come forth, let him live. Job had nothing more to say. No more arguments. He was quieted, but he was more than quieted. He was devastated. And undone to the point where God said, you're ready to bring forth my son now. It's not about you anymore. And he got that double portion because, you know, that's another story, another time. But let's just say this. If we are hard like that, then we don't sit here and justify it. Just break. Don't try to look good. Don't try to be something we're not. Just be with the Father. Then there is hope for bringing forth the son because that's what Job did. He broke. And he humbled himself, and he, he said, I am not the son. I have heard you with my ears, but I have not seen this yet to the point where I am dead and he's my life. And the father said, well, I'm going to do it then. I'm going to reveal my son in you, and I'm going to bring him forth because you're ready now. You know, so for everything, there is a time and a season. Don't fight against the Lord. If he is humbling us, if he is breaking us, if he is doing this to bring forth, just let him be with him there. Be with him there. Love him there. Know him there. Allow him to do what's needed to bring forth Christ. And we will cast out our sorrows. And we will be so happy that we didn't just play religion and miss that opportunity to really bring forth Christ. Um, and then we have the final thing is our eagle friend. She's beautiful. It ends here. This is the good mama. Doth the eagle mount up, verse 27, chapter 39 of Job, doth the eagle mount up at thy command and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock in a strong place. She's up, not in the earth, but in heaven. Verse 29, from there she seeks the prey, and her eyes behold the prey afar off, and her young ones suck up the blood where the slain are. There is she. This is the wise mama. She says, I'm going to take the view of the Father. I'm going to dwell in heavenly places in Christ. And I'm going to behold the slaughtered lamb from afar off. And when I see him, I'm going to feed him to my young, and they'll suck up the blood and eat the flesh of the crucified. And where the lamb of God, the slain lamb of God is, there I will be. You will find me where the slaughtered lamb is, because that is who I am. That is who my seed is. That is the spirit that we are of, a nature of sacrifice, because it's him. That's a wise mama. That's a wise mama. She seeks it out. She seeks out the crucified. Isn't that beautiful? And that's the end of chapter 39. It's just tremendous. My Bible fell open to that. And the Lord just, just breathed that. And I, I know that it's for me. I know that it's for me. And I know that I need to not be hardened by it. But I need to hear and let it come into me. I know I need that personally. So let's pray as one. I, I just need that. And I know there are others who just long after his heart in this way. So, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for the reality of your heart, the reality of your son in us, the reality of us being vessels of his life, vessels to travail, to bring him forth, vessels that can be good or bad mothers of the seed of Christ, that we have choices, we have opportunities, we have responses that are affecting the seed within us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for Galatians showing us the wrong way and the right way. Thank you. Thank you for the whole Bible declaring your heart for your son to come forth. Thank you for Job being such a stubborn dude, but then coming into true childbirth, releasing the firstborn, Lord, that it can happen. Lord, help us to be with you in the seasons that we're in. Help, help us to know you there and embrace you there and love you there and bring forth your son there, Lord. Let him grow there. Let him be sown there. Whatever it is that is the season of his life in us, let us just know you there and let it do its uttermost work so this will be a healthy boy, <laughs> a slaughtered lamb ready to give himself in sacrifice. And 
nor mingling of wild donkeys and our pride and the things of this earth, but just a pure release of Jesus from earthen, earthen, earthen vessels who are not the treasure but do contain him. Father, help us. Have mercy on Christ in us. Forgive us for our sins against your son in us. Forgive us for carrying him at times in a way that is just as hardened and forgetful as we could be, Lord. But Father, instead of focusing on that, we focus on the Son. We put our energy and our attention and our love not towards our failures, but towards his life. Everything we go through, just let it break us open deeper for him to live there. Let it all be part of that love and oneness. Lord, let it all work together to bring forth Jesus, all of it together. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the time this semester in childbirth and together, Lord. Let it continue. Let it continue until he comes forth in all of us, till we all bring him forth, until he comes forth in all of us as one. Let your heart be satisfied in Jesus. Lord, we trust you. Pray these things in your name, Lord, for your sake.